Stellenbosch is probably the world's most unequal town. Located just outside of Cape Town, the township of Kayamandi has less access to water, internet, higher unemployment and more crime. While Stellenbosch has 90 homes valued at more than $1 million. And the town's alma mater, the University of Stellenbosch, is a top three school for the country's high net worth individuals behind the universities of Witwatersrand and Cape Town. One reason for high inequality can be blamed on voting patterns. Kayamandi votes majority for the left-leaning ANC and the socialist EFF, while the rest of the town votes for the right-leaning DA. Voting habits are similar in Johannesburg, the world's most unequal city. South Africa's recent 2021 municipal report shows only 16% of municipalities had clean audits. The Auditor General admitted most municipalities are located in one province, namely the Western Cape, which is governed by the opposition DA. Meanwhile, two provinces governed by the ANC received no clean audits due to massive corruption and incompetence. In fact, one province run by the ANC had entirely no municipality that wasn't bankrupt back in 2014. And of course, what discussion on South Africa is complete without talking about the history of apartheid? By the mid-1960s, white South Africans were actually one of the richest groups in the world. In 1966, Time magazine said South Africa was experiencing a massive boom. The Rand Daily Mail declared that the country was experiencing a surfeit of prosperity. And the Financial Mail called the period between 1961 and 1966 the fabulous years. Black South Africans, though, had been shut out from wealth creation, economic development, and also denied political rights. The country's labor regime, especially in the mining industry, was built on a supply of cheap black labor. But what you need to know is that inequality has only increased since apartheid's downfall in 1994. And ironically, the white minority has gotten even richer since. According to author Clem Sunter, the ending of apartheid was a paradox where the white minority was liberated from their own privileged position and forced to fend for themselves in the world of business. Government jobs that were once relied on and guaranteed for Afrikaners now went to the black majority. Ironically, Afrikaner-owned companies like Naspers, Sanlam, PSG, Capitec and even private security boomed after South Africa was opened to the world. The Afrikaners were liberated by the creation of a level playing field. Necessity is indeed the mother of invention. Entitlement shackles it, Santa said. Now, the town has two homegrown billionaires, Johan Rupert worth $7 billion and Michiel Leroux worth $1.3 billion, both founders of big banks. Considering that a billionaire has the income of about 50,000 people and that a third of the people in Stellenbosch live on $100 a month, you can see that the vast majority of the town's wealth is in the hands of a few people, known as the Stellenbosch Mafia. Rupert has quietly pledged to give away all of his wealth. He has spent hundreds of millions of rands of his own money on poverty alleviation projects refurbished historical buildings and schools, funds a hospitality academy that has trained thousands from disadvantaged backgrounds for careers in tourism, and provides daily meals to hundreds. He also supports the Free Market Foundation, with which he has partnered to secure title deeds for people without property in Stellenbosch. And he provided the impetus and capital to start non-profit organizations, Freedom Under Law. Meanwhile, LaRue now spends his time managing his well-endowed Millennium Trust, which, according to some estimates, has a war chest of more than $100 million of his personal fortune, with a goal to make South Africa a better place. He donates heavily to anti-corruption NGOs such as Amabungane, Freedom Under Law and Corruption Watch. Rupert's dislike of politicians and the apartheid government started in around 1974. 
when he worked at Chase Manhattan Bank under David Rockefeller, saying, I didn't know black people when I was young and living in Stellenbosch. Back then, there was something like 10,000 black people in the whole of the Western Cape. I became an opponent of apartheid because of what the government did to the colored people. I never went to the Transvaal, but I did see what the Group Areas Act was doing in Stellenbosch, where it forced out all the colored inhabitants of Andringa Street. Trevor Manuel's surrogate father used to live there. He used to do plumbing work for my mother and always bought her tea. He says apartheid was an immoral system, and I told Werther as much when they moved on District 6. It was Rupert's Rand Merchant Bank that was approached by the black community for loans to start businesses. So Rupert went to his father and persuaded him to provide capital so they could buy industrial properties around Johannesburg and give 99-year leases to aspiring black businessmen. Rupert said this enabled them to borrow from banks. Black people could not hold title deeds. They couldn't even own their own homes so they couldn't start building up capital. We started the Small Business Development Corporation and one of the first properties we bought was Basil and Dow's old Leyland factory. Then they issued leases and the state couldn't do anything about it, he explained. Part of the first round of leases was issued to a group who repaid taxis and I became friendly with them. And I still am to this day. They remember what we did to help them back then. We created 70,000 jobs through Small Business Development Corporation and all they needed was title deeds. Do you have any idea how creative you had to be when you were a black entrepreneur without capital? He said. Lastly, the Stellenbosch Rugby Football Club is one of the oldest rugby clubs in the country and according to law, the biggest club in the world. It has produced by far the most Springbok rugby players of any club in the country. And playing in the famous maroon and gold jersey is considered by many an honor second only to playing for the national team. The club has produced some of the country's most revered Springboks, Duplessis, Paul Ruiz and Donnie Craven. But the club is about more than just rugby, rubbing shoulders with the club's extended fraternity of businessmen. Winemakers and former Springboks opens doors to some formidable networks. The VIP section in the grandstand of the Donny Craven Stadium with its bar and reception areas is a place to court the town's elite, develop new relationships and exhibit one's status.